Hi, my name is Mark Valdez. I am the director of Detained by Francis Benson at the Fountain Theater. If you'd like to learn more about the play or the fountain, take a listen to, uh, to these stories. One of the things for me about theater experience is that um, it is so uniquely um, imaginative in, uh, in a way that uh, requires an audience to, uh, to fill in a lot of blanks. And this, this, the act of having to do that um, actually builds our imagination muscles. And it just seems like more and more kind of as I look around at the problems that we're facing as a, as a world, as a city, you know, it's uh, uh, one of the one of the things that I that I just kind of note for myself is just that um, we just need to build our imagination muscles. You know, like we you know the problems get bigger and bigger, and the solutions just require kind of a, a, a giant imaginative leap. And um, and so I think that's what theater does. It's one of the things that theater does. It it it, it kind of provides a foundation for that. It's kind of a gym, an imagination gym, if you will. Um, and it's, it's the invitation to come in and, and for a moment collectively daydream something. And, uh, and because we build these worlds, you can actually start to see what's possible. So, so in some ways, I, I kind of feel like it is, it's bedrock to democracy in, in a lot of ways. When I think about my process for creating or, or, or directing plays, yeah, I um, think a lot about uh, how much I rely on collaborators uh, and how much, like, like for me, like that's just that's just the fun part, you know. That that's that's where you're just getting in a room with friends and uh, with others who are who are brilliant and smart and talented. Uh, just takes takes a, they can take a, a, an impulse and at the beginning of an idea, we'll often say like, here's the bad idea version. Help me find the good idea version of it, and uh, and and so so that is really core to to my practice. I think it's. It's that collaborative give and take with with colleagues that happens both with writers if on a on a on a new piece or with directors and uh, from writing or or with designers and then ultimately actors and then hopefully with with kind of an audience right um, and so so that's a big part of it I, I love to just uh, I'm kind of a nerd so uh, so I really love just kind of the the researching and the, the learning more of of something uh, uh, I I. I I often also kind of find that that sounds actually are something that's important to me. Like, uh, uh, what is the sound of this world? Not not in the way like a sound designer or composer is going to do, but but I try to think about just kind of the rhythms and just the tones and the feel. And so as I think about like this world that we start to create, uh, music plays a big part of how I just enter into a process, enter a world, just so I can start to understand the the rhythm of it. Um, uh, uh, I love I love just playing with um, with you know the like toys and you know just thinking about like what what uh, the tactileness of it so so maybe it's a set model or maybe it's my own just trying to hold something but but I feel like that's part of my my kind of uh, process especially as we go go into rehearsals um, just and just talking you know like it's part of that research is like who are the experts you know uh, uh i love hearing people talk about a, a particular kind of a, a kind of content content experts talk about kind of their areas of expertise because they they um you get their passion and you get their excitement and it just it just makes it more inviting and more much more fun to to enter those worlds so so i, I do a lot of that um I think there's part like as you start to get to know each other and, and you know actors especially when you, you, it takes a minute just to learn how everybody talks and how you talk to one another and how you're going to work together but that for me is also part of the part of the fun part of of figuring out just um the relationship making really I think is is is, is I think that's a big part yeah uh, I got a call from uh, Stephen Sachs at the Fountain, and uh, over the years we, we've been trying to to do something together, and this just has never worked timing wise. And um, and in this moment where where my schedule had my travel schedule had eased up a little bit, um, I got a call from him kind of at the right at the right time, uh, and uh, he said, "Hey, we've got this play that we're really excited about, and uh, wondering if you would take a look at it." And um, and I did. And it, you know, it's this really powerful play. And, and I got to say, my, my initial impulse was was to say no. It's like I, I don't know that I'm the right person for this because um, 
what I found like in my reaction was that it, it, it I was just enraged. Like I read this play and and it wasn't that I was just angry or felt like, oh, I'm gonna do something. I, I, I was just enraged. Like it rage is probably like really the, the, the right word. And and I thought like I don't I don't know that the, that the world or audiences want to see this angry production. And so, uh, so I said to Steve, I said, well, like, can we just hop on the phone? Cause like, I, I noted that I, it was such a strong response. And I said like, like, maybe we can talk through it because maybe I'm just missing something or, or I just don't know kind of what to do with these feelings and I just need to process them. But, but, but would you hop on the phone? And he said, yeah. I said, well, why doesn't, why don't we invite France Luce and, um, uh, and the three of us can just talk. I was like, perfect. So we got on the phone and I just said like, I, I just, I'm just aware that this is, this is my kind of emotional response. And, and like, as a director, as somebody who thinks about audience experience, my fear is that uh, I'm going to, um, it's just going to be this really angry production because these stories, uh, they, they, you know, like if, when you hear them, it, it's impossible not to just be outraged at, at just the, the injustice that's happening. And, um, and so, so we talked through it and, and France is just, just brilliant. Can I just say that? I mean, she's just as a writer and just as a human being. And she just said, well, you know, here's, here's something to think about that these stories, these stories have to be told. Like we, we carry that responsibility and, and sure we could come in and get really angry. But, but when you hear the, when you hear these voices, they, they're just so honest and they're forthright and they're, they're they just give so much and there are moments of anger, but, but ultimately there's just this human need to have somebody, just to have somebody witness, to have somebody know what's going on so that somebody here's what's happening to them and there's a strength in that and so she said think about that and um you know and then figure out kind of if this if this is something that you were this is a world and something you want to do kind of kind of spend time in and uh and i went back and i thought you know like this like i hadn't done a play like this before and and i i like to do different um you know i always like to do something new and uh and you know i've done a lot of community-based work in, in my own kind of practice and so, so I understood what she was talking about, and I thought, I'm just gonna. This is kind of a, a, a yeah, like take the risk, like try it, try this, like like I think it'll be, I think it'll be an artistic challenge, and uh, and and it's like, how do you make art out of um, something so brutal, you know, like that? That's a that's a real question for me, and and should we, like, should we make something so awful beautiful? You know, which is really like once you start to give it aesthetics, right? That's kind of what you do, and and so, uh, so these questions were just questions that I, I didn't have easy answers to, and got me that much more interested in figuring out like how do you how do you start to answer this, and you know, part of this process has been trying to trying to answer those questions. So detained is is a, a play that um, it's about the stories of people who are being detained in immigration centers, uh, detention centers. And uh, a lot of what, what uh, the play does is shed light on what's happening and, and how we got here. Um, so much of what, of what uh, the play deals with, it, it really just comes down to our, our laws and policies that at a certain level, we as a country have agreed to enact laws that, um, that have led to this the, the detention of immigrants, uh, 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 and and it uh, we, we kind of see that the range of, of you know we, we kind of we see what that means. You know, uh, uh, it's uh, the the laws are such that um, they're very prescribed, and so so it just means that yeah, I think like for me for instance like I, I had convinced myself based on nothing <laughs> frankly that uh that uh when you go before a judge that the judge holds a lot of discretion and weighs evidence and looks at your history and who you are and sometimes we do stupid things and and it all happens you know it happens to all of us and uh but it doesn't 
have to define us, right? But but these laws are such that uh, judges actually have very little, if any, discretion. Like they're so prescriptive uh, that um, that uh, you just automatically end end up in, in deportation. And the deportation system being what it is, it's like many people will spend more years in the detention center than they did in prison paying for their crime the first time. Like that's one example of, of what's going on. And so so we hear over the course of the over the course of the play, we hear these stories of, of what's happening. And and in a lot of ways we, we engage in a debate. We engage in a debate about who we want to be as a country and um, what are our values and, and are does these does, do these laws uphold our beliefs? And uh, and and I guess parts of it are uncomfortable. Like you, you have to sit in discomfort at what's happening because, like I said, like whether purposefully or not, whether consciously, actively, or just by by our own kind of uh, apathy or lack of engagement, we have allowed these laws to to get passed and and to to be placed and and the other the laws of the land. And so, at a certain level. We, you know, we are complicit in, in what's happening, and you just, you kind of, you're asked to sit with that for a little bit, and um, and it's powerful. You know, it's also like these stories. You know, there's these beautiful characters and these beautiful, these wonderful actors doing amazing work to bring them all to life. And it's for as hard as it is, there's also something really powerful and and, and beautiful. I, I would say about um, about people you know about, about hearing these stories that that i think uh i think kind of helps balance out that experience so so you don't you don't necessarily leave kind of <laughs> uh sad and and wanting to poke your eyes out because you know the world is so bad but uh you, you are left kind of uh, uh with a sense that that you can do something and and i think that's i think ultimately that's really kind of what we can do and all we can ask I am the luckiest human being in that I get to work with this brilliant, brilliant playwright, Francis Benson, who is just a badass, awesome, incredible human being, uh, insanely smart, uh, super insightful, just has this ear for dialogue, uh, for how people talk. Uh, it's, uh, it's the play that, that she's put together is just... It, just brilliant. It's so, so good. So, so powerful. Um, it's based on stories, on interviews that she conducted. And so there's this added element of people, of representing real people, real people who are going to come see the play and, uh, and yet editing and crafting and shaping this into, into a journey, into, a, into, into art. Right. And, um, and she has just done this amazing work. And, and I'm telling y'all, um, keep an eye out on this on this writer because uh, only just more brilliant things to come. I, I am sure of that. And then if that were like amazing enough, like this cast of, of actors who are just some of the best in the field. They are all so, so, so good. Uh, we have seasoned veterans like Christine Avila, who is in Zoot Suit, like in the original Zoot Suit, who has this amazing storied career and just brilliant actor and, and human being. And, and Jan Monroe, Will Dixon, who's all, both of them just, just freaking, just such good, good actors. Uh, Michael Rias, who's so, he just, uh, he's this great ability for comedy and just and just heartbreak and uh, uh camila and and marlo uh, uh younger actors who again just keep an eye on these two because they are they're so damn good and uh they bring this this energy and this the heartbreak of of what the system is doing to people uh and they do it just so honestly and uh and they just like the whole cast they're just generous and kind and i, I just can't say enough great great things I mean, they're just they're really good and we, we laugh we laugh a lot like rehearsals are, are fun and we do a lot of work uh but they're silly and, and they're everything that you want you know a rehearsal process to be and a cast a company to be um so insanely lucky really really am my hope for the audience uh uh in terms of what i'd, I'd like them to, to take away is is the sense that um that uh 
that we can do something, you know, that, that we, we can actually change policy. Like it, it, it's doable, you know, it's, it's not easy, but, uh, but we elect people, like we vote, like we can do things pretty, pretty easily. You know, it's not, it's actually not a mystery how policy gets passed. Like it's pretty, pretty obvious, right? And so, so for these things that we care about, for these, when we hear these stories, my hope is that uh, people will find entry points where they can join the conversation, where they can kind of add their voices. And, and, and if these are things, if what you see that is happening are things that you disagree with, that you feel empowered and that you feel that you can do something about it, that we're gonna be connecting audiences uh, with different advocacy groups here throughout uh, Los Angeles area. There'll be some talkbacks, there'll be some tabling that's happening around performances, there'll be some special uh, event engagement opportunities where if it's something that you wanna, you know, you wanna you know, help change and do something about, we're helping to provide those connections so that, so that you can do it. And at the very least, you know, it's, it's, it's bringing an awareness, right? It, it's, it's, you know, you can't unhear what you learned, you know, you can't unsee it. And so uh, at the very, very least, you know, you, you, there's a moment where you kind of, you, you sit with that. And, and I trust that that does something, that that will make a difference somehow. And so um, I think my hope is that if, if you come and you, you're open enough to the experience and, uh, and if you'd like, you know, there'll be an invitation to, uh, to kind of take some next steps. I can't wait to see an audience in a theater. Uh, just that. Uh, it, it's been a while and, uh, and there's something about just that, um, that communal experience, the, the, the co-dream, daydreaming, the co-imagining, the thing that happens when a group of people come together and to, to just uh, um, share that with a, with a group of people, I, I, I'm really looking forward to because it's a, it's a powerful thing. So I'm excited. Audiences must see this because it's going to be this beautiful, moving play that I think you're going to enjoy learning about and, and seeing. It's, uh, I think you're going you're gonna to go on a journey. And, um, and if you've been homebound, come, come take a trip at the fountain. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about just like the city of Los Angeles and the, the, the racial uh, demographics of this city. And, uh, and to think about the stories that are on our stages and the stories that uh, have been on their stages and that need to be on our stages. I think all, every theater needs to do a, a, a better job of, of reflecting what's happening locally, reflecting who's here, reflecting the stories of, of our community. I, I think that's a, it's a big part of every theater's mission. And what's exciting about a play like Detained is that you're going to see a, a, a company of actors that represent the city of Los Angeles. It, it's the same kind of diversity that you encounter walking down the street uh, is on our stage. And, uh, and I think that that, that matters. I, I think it's vital, not just for the survival of, of, of theater, because I, I think theater is going to survive. Like, you know, I'm not worried about that, but more for the, for the health of our communities. Like if, if, we, if we can't find ways to kind of foster discourse, and if we can't find ways to represent the people who we need to be talking with, you know, and, and can't put those on our stages, then I think, I think we're going to feel it in, in our, in our civic society. I think we're going to feel it in, in the way the city's run. And so this is, like I said, this is at the, at the beginning, this is a gift that, that, uh, that theater gives to our, our communities. This is why theaters matter. This is why we are essential workers. This is why, why we, we can shape the, the, fabric of, of our communities and so so representing stories putting bodies of color different abilities different languages uh, that, that wide range of diversity on the stages that's why it matters it it will make us a better city i don't know when i learned about the fountain it just seems that they've always been there honestly like i i can't imagine the day when i didn't not know that the fountain was there so, so, but that's partly why I'm so excited to be working with them. Yeah, this is a storied, um, important theater company in Los Angeles, and it, it's a it's a gift. It's a it's an honor to to be a part of this family because they put so many plays, so many important plays, like like in the important to like the 
the, the development of theater and in, in the, in the major plays that, that, that are out there in the canon, the, the fountain oftentimes is where you can see this work. Uh, they've brought, they've created a home for so many brilliant actors who've gone on to these storied, legendary careers, directors, designers have all gone through there. It, it's a, it's an important institution in our city and uh, it's exciting to get to be a part of part of that family now, part of that history. Uh, uh, and just the, the nicest, kindest, most generous people that you're going to work with. They are, they are truly uh, a wonderful group who, uh, who care deeply and, and they're always there. You know, when you need things, you know, they, they feed you. <laughs> Like one of my favorite things is that they have food so that when you're running out of time and you get to rehearsal and you, you hadn't eaten, there's food for you. And, and you know, they'll say like, you're not, you're not going to starve. Like it may not be a gourmet meal, but, uh, but you will be fed. And I think that's what they're doing. They're, they're kind of feeding the city. You know, they're, they're, they're amazing. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think I think actors, writers, directors, everybody go, go work at the fountain. Seriously, y'all like go do it. Uh, they care about artists. They they are artists, and uh, and you get a lot of support. You you get a lot of care. You're you're there's a, there are genuine efforts to make your vision come true. You know, the, the first answer is not no, uh, and that's that I gotta say is 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 a is a pretty rare. You know, like they're, they're trying to help your vision, can kind of make your vision a reality, and uh, and that that's really special. Yeah, you know? and and I think that's why they they. They are as storied and and legendary and respected as they are because it's a community of artists working with artists for artists to to bring good stories, important stories, moving stories to our to to our community, and um, and they're they're just great. You know, they're they're, they're going to be there for you. They're going to take care of you, and uh, that's special. Like that's 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 not to be taken for granted. Los Angeles. Uh, I just gotta say, like I love the city of Los Angeles. I I just love 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 this city. I, it, it's uh, it's complicated and beautiful and brilliant, and it surprises me every day. And and part of what I think makes this city so rich is is its its artistic life. There's it it's thriving. It's vibrant. It's alive. It's everywhere. And, and as I look at, you know, part of that is like the theater community. Like we are a part of that. We are contributing to that. And, uh, and there's an ecology. Um, and, and it's, there's something really beautiful about how, how all of this fits together, you know, uh, 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 and how it all supports one another. And I think that the fountain's role in, in this art ecology and this theater ecology is that there's a lot of plays that, uh, that are really dressing the, they're asking us to kind of look at kind of social issues, looking at looking at where we've gone wrong, of what's not working, uh, of where things can improve, and 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 not just um, not just in a in a down like you know like you can you can you can just walk outside the door to to, to see like everything that's going wrong in the world, but um, but what the fountain does is that the stories that they tell somehow. Can remind you that it's possible, like the the stories that the fountain tells tells um, lets you know that hey, like you're not alone. We're in a community. We're looking at these things where where we as a country, we as a city, we as people can can be more and do more, and 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 they bring kind of beauty to it. They don't pull punches, uh, uh, but they also kind of let you know that. I'll say hope, right? They they, they kind of make you make you kind of have hope in in the world and hope that we can make a difference, which it's, it's easy to forget. And and their role in kind of this broader college, like that's where they fit, and and they 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 bring these stories to light, and uh and the people who come through that building and and who kind of walk that stage, some of the best talent you're going to see in the, in this city. And and you know when you combine that, then then it really has has a possibility to make a difference, and and so supporting this theater, supporting this company, so that they can support the actors, so that they can support the talent that comes through, so that they can contribute to the, to our civic life. You know, it uh, that matters, and and that's 
really necessary right now. Hi, my name is Mark Valdez. I am the director of Detained by Francis Benson that is playing at the Fountain Theater. And I want to invite you to come see our show. Uh, buy your tickets, bring your friends, bring your family, come back into a theater. It's great. You'll be safe. You'll be in community. And after the show's over, hang around, learn some more about these issues around immigration detention. Let's make this world a little bit better.